everyone and welcome back to my channel. For those of you that are new here, my name is Ellie and I'm the founder of Code of the Future and today we're going to be continuing with the Rust course where I'm teaching you all about Rust for beginners. Before we dive into the tutorial, make sure you give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe down below if you are new to the channel. But with that said, I'll put my glasses on and I'll move you onto the screen. Okay, so in the previous video we looked at overflow uh, and what happens when you assign two different variables to a spe specific type um, and what happens if those types differ when you start doing operations and things like that arithmetic and then we moved on to typecasting and conversion and just showing you a few different ways of assigning types uh, and then what happens you know, how you can change type so cast a specific variable into a type okay cool so that was tutorial seven we are now on tutorial eight and i've made a new little folder so as usual we have our little main function and it's funny that I said that because that is what we are going to be looking at today. Functions. Right. So functions, that's what we're doing. Now, I just mentioned that this is our first, this is our main function. And if you recall from the first video, anything that we put inside this main function is then recalled in our, when we, you know, cargo run, when we run our file and compile it, uh, you know, so hello world works. And that's because when I type cargo run, hello world pops up. Cool, so we have this main function here. Now what's pretty cool about Rust is you can make your own functions and it follows a very similar setup to this main function that we see here. So I'm just gonna say the main function is our entry point to our program. And anything inside here will run. Cool. Now we can actually make our own functions. Now I realise I do a lot of comments in my videos and it's just because I've had a lot of positive feedback about comments. People seem to quite like that I take time to write out what we're learning. So if it's something that you're enjoying, then please let me know. If it's something that you want me to stop doing so much of, then also let me know uh, and I'll try to find a right balance. Okay, so we can actually make our own functions. I'll give that an exclamation mark. And so I'm just going to get rid of this print line and and have our main function empty. Now the way that we create our own function, so I guess creating our first function is the same way that you see our normal function. So we have fn for function and I'm going to call this first function because it's going to be our first function and functions are written in snake case. So I'm just going to put creating a function uh, and I'll just put snake case. I guess that's just to remind you that it must be in snake case. We have open brackets like that, and then we have our curly parentheses or brackets, whatever you like to call them, as so. So anything that we write inside these two brackets here will be executed when we call this function. So we're going to keep it simple for now, and I'm just going to say, what do we want to print? In fact, I won't even do a formatting like that. I'm just going to say, hello from function one. Cool. So there we go. Now, if I'm going to keep in, I know I just got rid of it, but I am actually, ah, I am actually going to keep in um, our hello world. Goodness me, I can't, I can't write today. I'm going to keep in the hello world. And what I'm going to show you is now when I run this, Okay, we have a little bit of an error, a little bit of an issue, um, and it's just saying that our function that we've created is never used, but that's fine. Um, so just ignore some of these warnings, but yeah, so we have hello world. Now you may wonder, but our function, where's where's our hello from function one? And the way that you call a function in Rust is you simply just say the function name, first function, open brackets, and notice it's syntax because it recognizes we have this function available and not to forget semicolons because I seem to be forgetting them all over the place and save that and we'll cargo run. We have hello world and hello from function one. Pretty awesome. So I'm going to get rid of the hello world for now because we don't really need it. So there we go. We've, we've called our first function. We've made our first function and we've called it in the main function here. Now something to mention with functions outside of our main function scope, they can actually be written either above or below our main function it doesn't really matter so i'm just going to copy it here and just show you that it works either way there we go hello from function one cool for the ease of the video i am going to i don't know what i've just done there i'm going to 
keep all our function i can keep the main function first just so we can keep referring back to it just so we don't get too confused now something i want to show you is that the cool feature of functions is you can call them as many times as you like so we'll save that cargo run and expect five hellos five three hellos <laughs> not sure what's going on today uh, my brain's a bit chaotic okay so we've got three three hellos from function one and that's the really handy feature of functions in just functions in general in programming is that you can reuse them all the time now as far as things go i'm just gonna call this once this function we have here is you know i'd say pretty basic all it does is print out some text that we have you know we can change the text it's cool but we can take it one step further and uh, make it even cooler so we're gonna do fn for our function and i'm going to create a new function called addition okay and we're just going to keep the setup as before so this is kind of the general I guess, format of a function it's written like this and anything inside here is executed and then we can input what are known as parameters in here so what we can say is okay let's take two values x and y so i'm going to put x and y in here and i want to add them together so i'm going to do a print line and we're going to say x plus y okay and we put a value in here uh, and what happens is i can call this function addition and we can put two values in here two and th let's say three now i think this will pop up with an error and i'll explain why so we're just going to cargo run yeah we have an error and this here is saying it's expecting one of these we'll scroll up to the top there's loads of errors that's gone on here but we'll just pick out the one where it says here so it says here expected one of these so it's expecting this here it comes up with some help so you know what what you need to do to fix it and it's this one that we're thinking of that we need here and if you input a parameter into a function it must be given a type that is just a rule of thumb i guess for for rust so you have to specify the type of the parameter so here remember when we do addition if we want to take two values so two parameters here and add them together they must be the same type so let's by default make them both i32s because that's what they are i guess by default save that and i'm just going to clear my screen here and we'll cargo run again there we go hello from function one and five so we've added two and three together and we've got five and here you could input some text you know you could put addition and then whoa too many d's addition and yeah and put it like that just to make I guess things a little bit easier when you read things but you don't really have to do that uh, i'll keep it like that for now i guess um yeah cool so that's how you input parameters into your function okay cool so now we've looked at i guess the basics of, of functions we're going to move on to something something's known as statements and expressions now, i'm not quite sure if i'm going to write this so i might just move this around but for now i'm just going to write a comment and just say a statement in rust performs an action but doesn't return a value a statement can be a variable declaration or function declaration now don't worry if you don't know what those two things mean we're just going to explain it now so i guess the first thing is a variable declaration now i need to make a, you know i need to make and assign a variable but i'm going to have to put it in here so what i'm going to do is we're just going to start a new section well i say section we're going to i'm going to put the comment in in our main file uh, just to be consistent with what we're doing okay so variable declaration we know inside our main function we're going to create a variable so let x equal 113 i seem to like 113 now this is a statement and that's because it doesn't evaluate anything so it doesn't evaluate anything so let here is what is known as a statement it's it's not an expression uh, which is what we'll come on to in a little bit so something that's worth noting which we can do in things like python we can say well you know let x equal 100 100 i guess 
and then let that equal y. We can't do that in Rust, it just doesn't let us. And that's another reason for it being uh, a statement. So that's just a bit of a side note, but variable de declaration is a statement. Now we also have things known as function, function declarations. Function declarations, I guess, just declaring a function. So I'm gonna put it in, in quotation marks, but in quotation marks, in, in a comment, but something as simple as saying, okay, function one, that is a f a declaring a function. Um, just put it there instead okay so function declarations and variable declarations are both statements and now i'm going to move on to what are known as expressions uh, now the reason i'm covering the difference between statements and expressions in this video is because we've learned about functions um, and i wanted to kind of show you that a function itself declaring a function is what is known as a statement so we'll move on to expressions and i'll just make an extra space there got statements and expressions uh, and call that the statements. Okay. So, an expression is anything else in Rust, really, um, that evaluates something, i.e. it returns a value. So, uh, our print ln macro is an expression. Our function call, so when we called the function and just said first function is an expression, so function call, but the function itself, fu a function declaration is, is a statement. Um, something as simple as 113 is an expression. Let me find where we wrote 113. So this here is what is known as expression, but this is a statement. Okay, so 113 is an expression because it evaluates to something. Okay, so something that may be hard to have wrap your head around a little bit is we've seen that let here is what's known as a statement. So you may think, okay, any time that I say let, that will be a statement and not an expression. But that is not always the case. And I'm just going to show you that now. So let is not always a statement. And I'll show you because what we can do is we can create a variable let z uh, and inside here we're going to say okay well we're going to let x equal 1 so this is a statement and now we're going to say well we'll have let's have x plus 4 now you may think you haven't put a semicolon and I do that all the time but this time it is actually intentional it's not by accident <laughs> um, so what we've done is we've created this value z and we've said okay inside this scope here we have a variable declaration so it's a statement so variable declaration with the semicolon after it and we've just said okay we'll let x equal 1 now what we want to do is we want to assign z to the value x plus 4 and this here this is an expression because it's evaluating something it's taking our original variable and assigning it to a you know adding 4 and then assigning z to that value so we don't need an exclamation mark so uh, not an exclamation mark a semicolon sorry so this so i'm just going to put expression so don't need semicolon and that's just something that's worth remembering so I'm going to run this in fact I'm going to print it first and I'm just going to show you what happens so you know I want to print z cool let's print z let's do that okay I need I have forgotten a semicolon of course I always forget my semicolons <laughs> here we go cargo run again apparently I've forgotten my semicolon again somewhere Let's have a look. Have I? Where's the error? Oh, it's after Z. Apologies. Here. We need a semicolon. Okay, so addition five, and then we have five here. Um, in fact, I'm going to change that to at six just so we don't, because earlier we added two plus three and got five, so we're getting the same value back. So I'm just going to add six and we'll cargo run again. Okay, so we get seven. So there we go. Cool. We have said we've made it a scope whereby inside that scope you have 
a statement, a variable de declaration of x, and then you take that value of x and you add 6. Now watch what happens when I add the semicolon here, which is what we don't do, we're not supposed to have a semicolon here, and I cargo run, here, we have an error, it says cannot be formatted with the default formatter, uh, and that's because here, let we have to let z equal to an expression, it can't be another statement, it's the same reason that we couldn't before do let x equal 10 and then let that equal to y because here this is an expression but letting x is a statement and this is also a statement because it's a variable declaration so you can't you're not allowed a semicolon here okay so that is statements and expressions in rust the final thing i want to show you is just how you return certain expressions and values from a function if you're familiar with functions from other languages like python it's similar but there are also some differences as well in fact i'm just going to create a new function i'm just going to copy all this uh, and we're going to call it i guess subtraction and instead of x plus y we're going to have x minus y so subtraction here it gives a value okay what you can do is you can omit all of this print line get rid of the semicolon because what this here is an expression, not a statement, because we're evaluating something. And we're going to recall this function up here. So subtraction, uh, let's take 10 minus 9. That's 1. And notice there's no semicolon. Now if I go to run this, so car go run, we come up with an error. And what happens here is it's saying, okay, well, we've, we've specified that x and y both i32s but we don't know what this is here. We need this to be an i32. Now we have a little help and it says, it says help, try adding a return type. So what's important in functions is if when we want to return, say an expression like this, x minus y, we must also specify the return type. So what type we want to return. So here we have two i32s, we're doing subtraction, we need it to return an i32. And the way that you do that is you just do kind of a forward arrow, um, i32 if i save and now instead of recalling this function i'm going to assign it to a variable so i guess i'm just going to call it number and say that's subtraction there uh, and instead of let me just put the let can't forget the let when we're assigning a variable and i'm just going to do a print line again in here we're going to just print our number so that's just something worth remembering if we just had subtraction on its own it wouldn't return anything because we're not asking it to print a line um it you know works but we need to assign it to a specific variable so we let the number be the value that we return from this and then we'll print it and that's because we have what we have now is an expression and this is how you return this so if i save clear the screen and cargo run Aha, semicolon, of course. Go again. There we go. We have our one here. Now, the reason one is there and not below is just because we had this little statement uh, here that we, that we wrote about. So, yeah, so that works. Um, and that's one way of, I suppose, I'll call this returning values from, from a function. So, this is an expression so no semicolon semicolon yeah uh, and then also to i can't believe operator uh well this is like a return operator this illustrates the type that will be returned from our function cool so that's something that you really need to remember now the other way that you can return is just simply put return here and it will return this value so if we cargo run there we go one also works um with this you can have a semicolon i do believe so if we just put the semicolon in yeah returns one um yeah so the the difference between simply just putting x minus y is you you cannot have a semicolon but you can also just use return so uh, you can also use return keyword and this works with or without a semicolon so if in doubt I guess put return <laughs> uh, and I'll just get, get rid of return from there okay awesome now the very final thing 
I'm going to show you something known as closure. This is a bit of an aside for this video, but it's also something that I think is really, really cool uh, and just incorporates functions again. So we had a function here. We inputted specific parameters. Now, the issue with these functions is, you know, they are tied to those parameters. You can't input any extra parameter and, and do some extra things to it because those are the stated parameters that we have and those are the parameters that we use. Now, I'm going to show you something known as closure and oh, and we're just going to create a new variable called let add, let add numbers and I just realised this needs to be inside our main scope which is there so we'll put it here okay so let add numbers and we're going to write the following so this is what is known as closure. We state, instead of doing a whole function, we can almost do the exact same thing within a variable itself. So our add numbers variable is going to be, it's going to consist of two i32 integers, x and y. Now I just realized because we've already used x and y, we can't do this. So I'm just going to change these to uh, s and t for the time being. I guess that's where my brain stopped in the alphabet. So s and t. Um, yeah, so we have two variables, s and t, both i32s. We want to add them together, and then we're just going to print this here. And we have add numbers. I'm going to save, and we're going to cargo run. And I just realised I did not get rid of the semicolon from this subtraction function here, uh, which is what I've been telling you you have to do. So, sorry, let's go back to where we were. Closure. And indeed, it prints out closure sum is nine. So this is a handy way of almost making a function, I guess without making a function really, um, is this. Now, I'm going to just put here, super handy, because you can use outside variables, which you can't do with a standard function because it's block scoped. So what that means is, you input the parameters that are allowed to be in there, and that's it. You can't add anything else to this, you know, to the to the function. So here we have again two variables. We add them together. We recall this input the two variables we have. But what we can do is we can just say, okay, well, let have let's have z and i thirty two be fifteen. Now I'm going to say, well, I want let add numbers. Same as before. So I'll just copy all this. In fact, I'll copy all of this. And I want to add Z on the end. In fact, S T S is S T U. So I'm just going through the alphabet in my head. I think that's right. If that's wrong, then I'm ashamed. Very sorry. <laughs> um yeah, I just realised I've been redefining variables as the same variables, which we can't do in Rust, which which is what we've learned. Um unless we make them mutable obviously. But for the for the time, you know, for the sake of the video, I'm just gonna change them to different to be different variables. So here we can add u onto this function and we can recall the entire function again. Here, and I'll cargo run, hoping I haven't missed out any semicolons. There we go, closure sum, so 9 plus 15 is 24. Cool, now this was just something that's a bit of an aside, it's not something you need to worry about too much, but I just thought it was really, really cool. I saw it on, a, on another video and thought I'd show you it. Yeah, it's really cool. So you can add outside variables to this here. And that's something that you can't do with functions. So I just thought I'd show you a bit of both, really. But that has been functions in Rust. So that was the video today. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, then please give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe down below if you aren't already subscribed to the channel. Comment if you fancy commenting. I also have a donation page and a Patreon set up for exclusive behind-the-scenes footage, uh, if you fancy checking that out. Um, but yeah, as I said, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you all in the next one.